Shalom. Shalom. Greetings again, brothers and sisters. We give glory to Ahaya, Ashere, Ahaya, our Alahayim, and our Adono Yache, Meshiaga, and our mother Rua Kakwadoshi. We are very thankful for this time. And let's jump right into it. We're going to be discussing what the baptism of the Holy Spirit and fire is that Yache brings. Let's start with John chapter 3, verse 5 through 8. John chapter 3, verse 5. Yache answered, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Except the man be born of water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of Elohim. That which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the Spirit is spirit. Marvel not that I said unto thee, You must be born again. The wind bloweth where it listeneth, and thou hearest the sound thereof, but canst not tell whence it cometh, mm. and whether it goeth, so with every one that is born of the Spirit. Some people, you're not going to be able to tell they've changed until you actually see what the lion has done in them. Mm. Not everyone can see the change that happens within the purging that one has to go through. So, John did baptism of water unto repentance, Yet Yache also brings the baptism of the Holy Spirit and fire, which is adversity through the Spirit. Let's look at Matthew chapter 3. Matthew chapter 3, verse 1. In those days came Yachin and the Baptist preaching in the wilderness of Judea, and saying, Repent ye, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. For this is he that was spoken of by the prophet Isaiah, saying, The voice of one crying in the wilderness, Prepare ye the way of Adonai. Make his path straight. Then went out to him Yorochalam, and all Judea, and all the region around about Jordano. I indeed baptize you with water unto repentance. But he that cometh after me is mightier than I, whose shoes I am not worthy to bear. He shall baptize you with the Holy Spirit and with fire, whose fan is in his hand, and he will thoroughly purge his floor and gather his wheat into the garner, that he will burn up in a chaff with unquenchable fire. And this baptism of fire that Yahweh is bringing is testified in the law and the prophets of what he was coming with. Let's look at Isaiah 48 and 10. Isaiah chapter 48 verse 10. Behold, I have refined thee, but not with silver. I have chosen thee in the furnace of affliction. We actually have to go through affliction in this life. This is the bread of affliction we have to partake in. Yacha is the bread, the unleavened bread, because <laughs> there's no iniquity in him, and we have to eat it. That's right. Let's jump to Malachi chapter 3, verse 1 and 3. Malachi chapter 3, verse 1. Behold, I will send my messenger, and he shall prepare the way before me. And Adonai whom ye seek shall suddenly come to his temple, even the messenger of the covenant. Behold, he shall come, saith Ahayah. On Sobawata. But who may abide the day of his coming? And who shall stand when he appeareth? For he is like a refiner's fire and like fuller's soap. And that's through the law. Because Deuteronomy chapter 33, I think it's verse 2 and 3, talks about how he gave us a heritage, a fiery law. We're being purged by the commandments. And he shall sit as a refiner and purify of silver. And he shall purify the sons of Loaye. And purge them as gold and silver, that they may offer unto Ahia an offering in righteousness. And there, as we talked about, he's purging the nation. He's purging the sons of Lawai, because the priest's lips should speak truth. The law of the covenant is supposed to be in his mouth, right. according to Malachi chapter 2. So he's purging the sons of Lawai, so they shall offer an offering of righteousness. They were the ones that were supposed to teach. So they have to be purged to make sure that the rest of the tribes can understand the truth. We have more edification on this baptism. The Holy Spirit comes through discipline. And we can read about that in Wisdom of Solomon chapter 6, verse 12 to 20. Wisdom of Solomon chapter 6, verse 12. Wisdom is glorious and never fadeth away. Yea, she is easily seen of them that love her, and found of such as seek her. She preventeth them that desire her, and making herself first known unto them. 
Whoso seeketh her early shall have no great travail, for he shall find her sitting at his doors. To think therefore upon her is perfection of wisdom, and whoso watcheth for her shall quickly be without care. For she goeth about seeking such as are worthy of her, showeth herself favorably unto them in the ways, and meeteth them in every thought. For the very true beginning of her is the desire of discipline. So we see the beginning of attaining to the Holy Spirit is the desire of discipline. That's why we were admonished in Isaiah 5 and 19, If ye be willing and obedient, ye shall dwell in the land. And the care of discipline is love. It gives us understanding of what love is, right? Continue. And love is the keeping of her laws. Then we see that confirms the fruits of the Spirit encompassing the law. Right. Because charity is the bond of perfectness. Right. And love, which is charity, as is attested, is the keeping of her laws. And her laws come from the Father. That's right. And Yahshua's laws come from the Father. Because they are one. They are Ahaya Alayim. They are united. That's interesting. I found some precepts on that. that were really, really good. In John 17 and 21, mm -hmm. it said that they all may be one. As thou, Father, art in me, and I in thee, that they also may be one in us, that the world may believe that thou hast sent me. And the glory which thou gavest me, I have given them, that they may be one, even as we are one. Oh, wow. Right. Because he said us. Right. That means two separate entities together. It was an example of the Father in him working all the works mm. and him and us working all the works mm, that's what's shown that one means being in unity right because him being in our hearts it puts us together they are one united and the father in him and he in us bearing the fruits thank you for that praise I am <laughs> so we left off at wisdom of Solomon chapter 6 verse 18 please right. And love is the keeping of her laws, and the giving heed unto her laws is the assurance of incorruption. Giving heed unto her laws is the assurance of incorruption. We have to listen with our hearts and truly give true heed to these laws and have the assurance of incorruption. Let's continue. And incorruption maketh us near unto Elohim. And that lets you know she's bringing us unto the fruits of our spirit. Because Peter talked about how add to your faith Add, with all diligence, add to your faith virtue, right. and to your virtue, knowledge, and to knowledge, temperance, and patience. And then when you get patience, you get to holiness. Now you're getting closer to Allah. Right. And holiness, brotherly kindness. And then with brotherly kindness, the end goal, if I might not have said it exactly in order, but the end goal is charity. Right. And Allah is love. So you can see how taking heed to her laws brings us near unto Allah because. That's how he is. The fruits of the Spirit come from him. He was before anything was. Ahaya was from forever. So his fruits that the Holy Spirit has, that Yacha has, the 12 holy virgins, they all exemplify in the Father. All right. So we have to attain unto these things so we can get near to him too and bear his image as well, which is his son, Yache. And it's interesting, he said everybody contains the Father. You can see that all of them got a little piece of him, but Yachi got the fullness of the spirit. So you can see how you, <laughs> you got a daughter of charity, you know, this a long suffering and the you know, they got a piece, but mm -hmm. Yachi got the fullness of the Allahim bodily. That's right. That what was said in Colossians chapter one. And it gives understanding of what it meant. He had all the fruits. He even had the Holy Spirit without measure. Right. He's the firstborn, only begotten. Prince of Peace. And incorruption maketh us near unto Allah. Therefore, the desire of wisdom bringeth to a kingdom. Mm -hmm. So, those of you who desire wisdom, come eat of our fruits. Come eat of our fruits. She said it herself in the book of Ecclesiasticus, chapter 24, verse 18 to 19. In Sirach, chapter 24. Verse 18, she said, I am the mother of fair love and fair and knowledge and holy hope. I therefore, being eternal, am given to all my children which are named of him. Come unto me, all ye that be desirous of me, 
and fill yourselves with my fruits, the fruits of the Spirit, we can attain unto her through the desire of discipline. And that discipline in her comes with affliction. Let's look at Ecclesiasticus, which is also the book of Sirach, uh, chapter 2, verse 1 to 5, please. Sirach, chapter 2, verse 1. My son, if thou come to serve Adonai, prepare thy soul for temptation. Set thy heart aright and constantly endure, and make not haste in time of trouble. Cleave unto him, and depart not away, that thou mayest be increased at thy last end. Whatsoever is brought upon thee, take cheerfully, and be patient when thou art changed to a low estate. For gold is tried in the fire, and acceptable men in the furnace of adversity. We know what's coming. He's told us what's coming, so we can't be surprised. Therefore, we just have to be patient. He already showed it. His word is going to be fulfilled. We're going to be tried. Let's look at this adversity that we're going to be going through within. Ecclesiastes chapter 4, verse 17 to 20. So at 4 and 17. For at the first she will walk with him by crooked ways, and bring fear and dread upon him, and torment him with her disciplines, until she may trust his soul and try him by her laws. And it's amazing that it said, For at the first she will walk with him by crooked ways. We're going to be tried because the straight path is the law. Right. So we're going to be put in situations where we have to be tempted. Are we going to keep the law or not? Right. And in situations where are we going to keep the fruits or not? Are we going to get angry, offended, right. try to justify ourselves, walk in pride, get lifted up, and things of that nature? We're going to be tried in those to see what we will do. And she'll bring fear and dread upon us tormenting us with her discipline which is what her love that's right because she wants to see us make it she wants us to partake in the holiness of the father the father chasing us and the son whom he loved in hebrews 12 and here the mother's chasing in us as well righteous parents All right because allah I am, he has no pleasure in the death of him that died they want to see us make it and that's very encouraging to know that they want us to attain unto them All right uh -huh. And that love that she's given us is it only, and it only hurts. It seems grievous because we're not used to it. But the more we grow in it and get used to their rod of correction and their path, it becomes easy and very joyous. As we're just realizing, seeing more and more what we're going towards, it's like this is great. The fruits of the spirit are mighty. You even start seeing it how it works when you're in the situations. Right. And then you have to, you're like, man, the fruits of the Spirit really tore that up right there. <laughs> Just work in righteousness. Delivers. Truly does. Oh, that's great. Uh, let's continue then. And she does that, and as I said, she does it that she may trust his soul. Then she will return the straight way unto him. And comfort him and show him her secrets. So it was just to make sure we were worthy. Right. That lets you know the Holy Spirit, the Mother, has something in store for us that she wants to give us. But she's just trying us to make sure when she brings it out, we're ready for it. Right. We're where she needs us to be that she knows when we receive it, we will cherish it. Because if you just give somebody something without them working for it, they don't appreciate it. Not at all. But when you go through the furnace of affliction, and then she gives you that reward, that gift of the Spirit. You cherish it and you hold on to it with all your soul. You make sure you keep the commandments and bear the fruits. Because you know what you had to go through and from whom you received it. And by whose blood you were given the opportunity to receive it. And by whose mercy the son and the mother was sent that you may receive it. This is a wonderful gospel. Continue. But if he go wrong, she will forsake him and turn him over to his own ruin. No, for surety, brothers and sisters, if we go away from the commandments and the fruits, the Holy Spirit will leave us. Right. We can't sin and think she's still with us. She's pure, separate from iniquity. She's undefiled. And there's a wisdom of Solomon, chapter 1, tells about that. 
so we can know scripturally that the concept that we still have the Holy Spirit even if we sin, that's not true. No. It's uh, from Wisdom of Solomon chapter 1 verse 4. It says, For unto a malicious soul wisdom shall not enter. That's why Yahweh said you should know them by their fruits. You have by the fruits of the Spirit, one will know whether Yache and the Holy Spirit is there. Right. For a malicious soul, wisdom shall not enter, nor dwell in the body that is subject to sin. So if we can't let go of our iniquities and lust, she won't be there. That's why it says she's trying us by our laws to get us to see if we'll let go of our, our former ways. Let go of our old bond and union with iniquity that we may be brought into her yoke and her discipline. For the Holy Spirit of discipline would flee deceit and will remove from thoughts that are without understanding and will not abide when unrighteousness cometh in. Thoughts without understanding are thoughts contrary to the law and the fruits of the Spirit. All right. So we have clear admonition that if we are operating like this, the Holy Spirit is not with us. All right. Observe the opportunity and beware of evil and be not ashamed when it concerneth thy soul. It's an interesting thing when it says be not ashamed when it concerneth thy soul because a lot of people are going to be tempted with keeping the law in a situation that seems to be profitable unto them. Mm. So when it says be not ashamed when it concerneth thy soul, say you're sitting at a, a dinner with your boss and something transpires where either you're at that fork in the road where you gotta keep the commandment or you gotta do what seems good in your boss's eyes. That's why I said be not ashamed when it concerns thy soul because you're gonna get tried. So real situations. All right. And I is gracious to be revealing these things in these times, knowing that we're getting ready for the great tribulation to come. He's been merciful to show us the way that we may walk in a straight path and not turn on to iniquity, but walk in that path that has been prepared by his messenger. And let's look at Isaiah chapter 30, verse 20 to 22. Isaiah chapter 30, verse 20. And though Adonai give you the bread of adversity and the water of affliction, Yet shall not thy teachers be removed into a corner any more, but thy eyes shall see thy teachers. These are the times we are coming into. Now the truth of the gospel is coming out. And thy ears shall hear a word behind thee, saying, This is the way. Walk ye in it. When ye turn to the right hand, or when ye turn to the left, and ye shall defile also the covering of thy graven images of silver, and the ornament of thy molten images of gold. Thou shalt cast them away as a menstruous cloth. Thou shalt say unto it, Get thee hence. Now this is quite amazing because it was a voice talking to us. So this is something going on within us. <laughs> you shall defile also the covering of thy graven images of silver. We're going to hate the works of iniquity within us. We will not want to walk in any of those things that we've walked in before. No one who was actually speaking to us. Anything else? That's good. Child and brothers and sisters. <laughs>